Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Sunday chat today is, is going to be totally random because it's going to be a working video. I'm plonking the camera in the corner and getting on with my work. Obviously I'll come across plants as I go along which I might bring over to the camera. Uh, I've got various tasks to do out here but I've got to go out this afternoon so I haven't got my whole Sunday like I've normally got. I've got what's left of the morning because I've only just found out I've got to go out. So I need to crack on and as I said it's got to be a working, um, working Sunday which is not normal. I normally take the day off on Sunday but I've got work to do. So uh, we'll get on with it and we'll have a look at some things as we go along. So let's get started. Okay, first job of the day, water the mounts. I haven't got time now to water the mounts, so the good old sprayers coming out. <laughs> I don't use this as a general purpose tool, I use it more, of, more as an emergency, if you know what I mean. Now, luckily the mounts are due a flush today, so I don't have to muck about mixing any fertilizers or anything. I can just pour some RO water in the sprayer and crack on. And no matter what I'm doing with my orchids, even like just going around with a sprayer, spraying every mount, I still look at them as I go along. As I said, I don't treat this as a... Now this sprayer is playing up at the moment and doesn't seal very well. Ugh, we'll see how we get on. Needs a new O-ring. If it doesn't hit, then it's not leaking. <laughs> Holding on, good stuff. So when I'm spraying, I try and avoid the plants, but it's you know <laughs> tough. We've got the daytime temperatures in here now a bit better, um, and each day it seems to be. Bearing in mind it's not that warm outside at the moment. You know we're having a bit of a chill. Um, the daytime temperatures in here, without the aid of the heater, are not doing bad. And on nice sunny days, where it's around the other place, I'd have the extractor and the inlet fan going flat out, and I'd have the hydrofogger on because it, they would take away all my humidity, and I'd have two circulating fans on the go to try and keep the place cool. There's nothing going on. No electricity is being used. We like that a lot especially at the cost of the flipping stuff now. It is something everybody's going to start looking at because I don't think these um, energy prices are suddenly going to drop down. I just don't think that's going to happen personally. I think we're going to be stuck with these high prices for some considerable time and possibly even going up more because the uh, things that are putting it up haven't finished applying their um, nuisance value yet. We could do the vanda roots while I'm at it. Just as well, I'm, I'm looking at them, I just as well give them a spray. Uh, where do I get to? There. At least when you're doing this, you... Uh... <laughs> it's difficult to miss one, let's put it that way. Because the, like the moss goes dark when it's been sprayed. That's looking nice at the moment. I'm looking forward to these two buds coming out on this one because these are hanging so they don't show very well. I mean I could take a leaf off and see them better but you don't sacrifice a good leaf, leaf to see blooms. But when these two come out they'll show. Right, turn that round then, down one side. I found the weak point on these shelves. It's not the structure itself. It's that pole goes down into an open hole and they don't fit very tight. So they allow that. Well, that's where the weak point is. I could do something about that. You know, I mean, I could actually um, wedge them in there, I suppose, so that they're nice and stiff. 
There's various things I could do, which I haven't looked into yet. Um, but that's the weak point. And another thing I've noticed is the two end bits have got two rods holding that base together. They're not very firmly fixed. And the more weight there is on here, the more chance there is of pulling one end and pulling the whole end off of those two rods, and the whole thing would collapse. So these are not that good. But I've had a look at some far more expensive ones. <laughs> the design's the same. It's basically the same. There's not enough difference to warrant three times the price. So we won't be doing that. What I might do is just try and make the frames that I've got a lot more rigid. You know, do some work on the ones I've got to make them more sturdy. I mean, I could sort of glue all the parts together, make them really solid. That would help. The old Gorilla Glue out or something. But um, the only reason for not doing that is that one day I might want to take them apart. Well, when would that day be? Thinking ahead, when would that day be? And the chances are that day is not going to come for a very long time because it would probably mean I'm moving out of here, wouldn't it? And we're hoping not to have to do that for some considerable time. Right, that's that one done. And the, the, I don't worry about the drips. The bit, the small amount that goes on the floor is not a problem. And at the moment, all of those are dripping on each other and into my moss trays. So it's not actually going on the floor. So that works quite well. <laughs> Right, let's have a go along in the slot now. Um, we had a look at, uh, I'll get it down on here. I did say we'd have a look at some plants. Now this one is a non-bloomer. And quite honestly, this is probably its last year where it's gonna get a chance to bloom, because I, I don't know why. It's got the light, you know, but what it is doing is pushing up a nice strong new growth there and another one here. So it's growing. But then it did that last year, and it didn't bloom. So, you're on borrowed time, mate. And that's something that I'm looking at quite seriously at the moment, is plants that are not performing and haven't been for some time. And they might just have to go. Now, it's partly space. I sort of look along the lines that a plant that's taking up space and isn't performing, is taking up the space that another plant could be using. Plant maybe that I haven't got at the moment. In other words, new plants. So, uh, yeah, you know, you give your plants an amount of time, you possibly try changing a few things. Um, there's only so much you can change in a space like this. Um, and some plants just won't perform. Um, those of you who subscribe to um, First Ray in the States, obviously not here, he always does a, a sort of culture guide when he does his monthly news bulletin or whatever it's called, which I get. Um, I, I haven't always got time to read it, and sometimes it's about something I'm not interested in, and sometimes it is, so, you know. But um, it's quite a good bit this month on basically just that very subject. Some plants are finicky and fussy and there are many factors to consider about what could be wrong and why your plant's not performing that well for you when it might do for your friend who lives just up the road. And it goes into all the factors that could be affecting your fussy plant. And there's a lot. <laughs> An awful lot and the trouble is there would be a great temptation to have a go at quite a few of those things at the same time if you do that you'll never know which one was the problem will you you see what I mean so it's not always obvious what's wrong it could be light you know, it could be temperature another one that a lot of people don't think of that can be quite important to some orchids is the difference between the day and the night temperature and to some orchids, that's very important. And it needs to be six, seven, eight degrees centigrade. That's quite a lot. Now, mine don't get that. 
you know, my daytime at the moment is going up to sort of, um, what, 20, 23 ish. 22, 23, which I'm happy with because it means I haven't got to cool it down. And then at night, I'm, made I'm maintaining 18 degrees at the moment, so the thermostat allows it to go to 17 and then pulls it back up again. So they're not getting that much difference, really. It's just about enough. But for most, it's more than enough. But when you've got a collective area, like what I have got and like what a lot of you have got, no doubt, you can't keep doing lots of different things for different plants because you've only got the one area that you grow in. And that's it, you know, you can't suddenly have, I mean, a lot of people, my viewers, especially in the States, grow outside. Or some form of outside, like a polytunnel is a form of outside, it is outside the house. And with the ends open, you know, it is open to airflow and fresh air. That's something else my orchids don't get since I moved here. They don't get fresh air because I haven't got an inlet and an extractor fan firing up all the time. So the air they get, I mean they are getting a little waft of fresh air now and again now because I'm using the conservatory door a lot more. You know, update on cats. Elvis does not like going outside. He's not that fussed. He, he gets all wild-eyed when he gets out there. He's not that happy. And I, he was the brave one around the other house, the bold, lazy, laid-back one. Now, he's not so good now, but he uses the litter tray, so it doesn't matter. Mojo, however, refuses to use the litter tray and is a problem. And he has started asking to go out. He sits by the conservatory door and looks at me. Um, the trouble is, I talk to him, I go, do you want to go out? And I keep forgetting he can't hear. You know, his, his hear, hearing is virtually gone now. But he can see my mouth movements. So, um, and he might still have a bit of hearing, I don't know. Um, but anyways, he's asking to go out now. And when he goes out, he is having a wee, basically. Which means he stopped weeing on the mat. Which is good. But that's all he does outside. He doesn't seem to want to do his uh, big business, so I've still got to put up with that in the house. But that's the way it is, you know. I mean, I feel grateful that I haven't got huge big vet bills every month because my cats have got serious illnesses and injured limbs or joints or anything like that. They are old and they are getting fragile. But they're hanging in there, you know, it's okay. Ugh. For which I'm very grateful because I haven't got huge amounts of spare money. Um, as far as money goes, the um, inheritance money can now be classed as on its way, but it ain't here yet. <laughs> uh, um, it was me worrying about the renantheras previous video and where to hang them it suddenly dawned on me just because a pot's got a hanger it doesn't actually have to be hung up does it so for now they're just in a tray like all the others I'm just giving the tops of their pots a squirt because they're in fresh media and that will dry ultra fast and I want to keep them hydrated all I've got to do is remember where I put them there's two up here it's the two smaller ones And then the bigger one I put over here. Well, I did say it was a maintenance job, didn't it? I might have to twist the camera, but we need maintenance on this. You're gonna get seasick. <laughs> Somewhere near it. Oh, where's the flipping plant? No, I can't see any screen now. Somewhere there. Now, when we did this and we put it in the pot, First of all, I was worried about the fact that um, these do need the bright light and traditionally the brightest light is in the roof. That's not strictly speaking true anymore. The roof is opaque. This isn't. And this gets morning sun. So that shelf gets more light than hung up in the roof at the moment. But what we have is a problem. Because what we have is a wonky plant in the pot, which I don't like. 
Now, I don't know whether a stake's going to hang in there or not, but what I want to do is try and straighten this up. I'm not sure whether a stake will do it. Not in a pot like this, you know, with, with this amount of holes in. Well, it's better than it was. I wonder whether I could put the stake over the other side and tie it. I think that'll do for now. That will do for now. As I said, it's only just been potted and there will be other times when I can have a play with that. That's moved it halfway to where I want it to be. Now, halfway is better than where it was before. So I'm just, I just want to keep this um, moss and bark moist at the moment. And as I said, that, that lives there where the morning sun comes through for now. Right, so that, that was the uh, seasick again. <laughs> Sorry about this. That was the um, spraying of the mounts. Now, can you see the flaw in my plan? Because this has happened twice now. Because my mounts are on those racks, I forget these over here and they get missed sometimes. And that means instead of going a couple of days, they've gone quite a few days. We're in the growing season now. <laughs> Do them any good. So I'm just pop popping these back where they go so that they're not in the way. There's not much water on the floor at all. There is some, but it's not much. And as I said, with the warmer weather now, my circulating fan, which is off at the moment, which will go back on in a minute, it, it evaporates up into the air. Not too bad. Um, yeah, so. We've got these over here, we've got my Jenkins CI, which the flowers are starting to go now. So very soon we will be unmounting this and remounting it. It's got to be done. Because it's outgrown its mount now. Well, what's it going to be like by the end of yet another season then? It's going to be off the mount, isn't it? So it's got to be done. Butchery coming up on my Jenkins CI. <laughs> Poor little thing. Well, it's, you know, it's been done, I think it's been done twice in the past, and it doesn't do extremely well the first year, but it does very, very well the next year. And it's just something that, you know, if you're going to refresh mounts or change the moss, unmount it and remount it again, you have to put up with the setback for that year. It's just going to happen, you like it or not. Right, that's the ones that normally get forgotten. And then... Well, I've got a sprayer here. I've got a couple of catliers up here in these open baskets that are not staying in there much longer because they're hard work. Because they don't, because they dry so quickly, more quickly than the rest of the catliers, they don't fit into the watering cycle. So either I've got to water those more frequently or they need to go in a similar environment to the rest of the catliers so that I can pull them all back together again. Um, right, plants that are on borrowed time. <clears throat> this one has never grown. It had a lousy root system, but it has a root system, but it won't grow. It's got no leaves now, so it can't feed itself. These are strong, plump canes, but it won't grow. There is no growth coming out of that base and hasn't been for some time. So it's got a few months. This is the growing season. If it's going to do something, it should be responding to the longer days and all that sort of stuff. But it won't grow. And that's a um, Dendrobium formosum, which those of you who like my infundibulum, very similar. Very similar, but it won't grow. So you're a nuisance plant. And then this one over here may have just saved its bacon, and it may not. Because this is a very nice Dendrobium phalaenopsis type, and it's Thai Angel. We've seen the blooms on this frequently. And it's dropped most of its leaves except for one. And it hasn't grown a new growth for some considerable time, and the roots are very poor. So it's got a new growth. But that doesn't look like a healthy new growth to me because it's gone very thin very suddenly. I've got a feeling that growth is going to collapse. 
which means it's surviving with hard one leaf and hardly any roots. So it's living off its resources, it may pull itself together, but not doing very well at all. In actual fact, most of my Phalaenopsis types aren't doing very well. They just don't. Don't know why, never worked it out. Um, I've tried different light, tried different media, tried quite a few different things. <laughs> I suppose I could try just ignoring them, couldn't I? Um, and unfortunately, I think this is at it. This is Dendrobium senilli. It's not rotten, and it still has a solid base, but it has next to no roots, and again, no signs of life. Do you know what? Oh no, that's just, it's just the old roots. I thought there was some green at the base there, but there isn't. So again, this one's just not growing. Again, it's another one. If I lose it, I'll have to try again. That'll be, if I have to try again, that will be my third one. But, um, I'll just keep trying. And it seems to be one of those... There are some. You know, I've actually read this in um, Ancient Scrolls and you know, all that sort of stuff. That there are some dendrobiums that just go downhill in... in cultivation. Um, they're, they're very finicky in as much as the slightest thing that's wrong and they will slowly go downhill. If there's a lot wrong they'll go downhill quickly but if they're only just off their happy spot they can take quite a few years to be slowly having less and less energy, less new roots, less less and then suddenly they keel over and that's what Mr. Harry has done twice now. So we shall have to wait and see. I've got some Catlia types on borrowed time. This one got mounted because it did lousy in a pot. It's been on there a while now. We don't have a new growth. That in fact was the last new growth, not that one. Unfortunately the leaves on this large came, they got scorched. They got right up next to the roof in the old place. So that was the last new growth. It has new root tips, so we may get a new growth on it. It's not in my way and it gets watered with the other mounts. It's not the end of the world, is it? And this is another catbeer type on the mount that just doesn't seem to want to grow. Don't ask me what these are because the fact that I was expecting them to fail, I <laughs> bother putting a tag on them, you know what I'm like. Now this one has no signs of new growth, but what it does have is the tiniest sign of a root. So maybe. As I said, these things that aren't doing very well, if they don't respond to the longer days and the better daytime temperatures, then they never will. You know, I've had long enough, a lot of them. Um, right. It's my little Orangus with the water in the crown. We'll get rid of that. I'm going to push our luck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you better have a look at this now because it is open. Um, my little mounted Phalaenopsis. And this has got a name. It's something like Sogo Gotteris. It's a strange name. But as I've said, they may be small, but they're very attractive little blooms. Very attractive. Nice combination of colours. So that's that, and that's not a bad spike. For this plant, it's probably the best spike it's had for a very long time. One, two, three, four, five, possibly six blooms, to, six more to come. I mean, not six altogether. But, you know, that remains to be seen. And um, other plants that are on their last, <laughs> last couple of months before they find their way. We've got the hedge going again now, which is good. Because I can actually just dump stuff up the back of that area and it's not in the way. And there's nothing planted there at the moment, so uh, that's working okay again. We've got our hedge back. So look out, you lot. <laughs> I don't have to go up the recycling centre with you in a bag anymore. Um, yeah, there's a few Oncidium types that are on their, uh, on their borrowed time as well. 
plus that zygo petalum that I potted up. That's done nothing since. And the back bulb, I did keep a back bulb of that as an experiment. That hasn't chucked out any growth yet either. Um, yeah, there are some. I mean, there's this one. This hasn't grown a new growth for a very, very long time. And the last one that it did grow rotted off. And you might think, what the hell are you doing keeping that? Well, why I'm keeping that is what it says on there. It's irreplaceable. I'm not ever going to be able to get that again. So I'm hoping that one day it will produce a new shoot. At which point it might produce some roots and we might be able to recover the plant. But it's been sat there doing nothing for quite a long time. Uh, well, I forgot where I got it from. <laughs> now that's been tried in normal media, normal oncidium type media. It's been tried on a mount, didn't work on a mount. It's now in moss as a recovery. So it's had three chances, if you see what I mean. And so, but that's it's growing medium. As far as where it grows, when it was on a mount it was getting quite higher light. It got moved to a lower light area. Um, in the pot, prior to going on the mount, it had several goes at different light aspects. Just doesn't want to grow. Doesn't want to grow. And there are others. Uh -huh. Most of the mounts are sort of okay, really. I've got some telumnias that are not in a good state but I'm hoping that refreshing their moss is going to pull those back. Um, a long time ago, in fact, I'll use that, I very rarely put an end screen on my Sunday videos because there's nothing really to link into, but there is this time. A long time ago, I took two telumnias that were failing badly and took off all the rotten bits and I ended up with two tiny little pieces. Um, I'll put the link to when I did that, yeah, so that you can watch that and then come back to what they look like now because they look better than some of the ones that are supposedly okay, if you know what I mean. Just two tiny little telumnias. Now, which ones was it? It was that one, definitely, and that one. Now, as I said, there's a, there'll be a link at the end of this video to go and see the you know, state these were in when they were, you know, pulled apart and remounted. And when this one was done, I believe that this, see it's got three fans. It's got an old fan with two leaves. Then it's got this fan here. That, that was its only hope. And I believe that tiny growth there may have been just a shoot. But that's growing. That's actually got new roots coming out, a new fan and hasn't rotted at the base by keeping the moss just away from the very base of the plant. So that's coming on. And then the other one was the tiniest of little pieces. <laughs> that tiny. And it's growing. These are new leaves coming out. There's no new growth yet, but it's put up a couple of new leaves and down in the moss are a couple of roots. So again, I think that may pull through. Now you might sort of think, well that's four or five years off blooming. Not if it gets going. Telumnias can grow at a rapid rate if they're in happy, happy mode. And um, you know, they can get to blooming size very quickly. Um, they're just one of those orchids that do mature quickly. So. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, that could stay out here, but this this is a clear way now. I use the uh, um, I use the door to let uh, Mojo out quite frequently. He goes he goes out when it's still dark in the morning. He has his breakfast and walks straight up to here to go outside. And um, the fact that it's still dark isn't a problem for a cat, is it? <laughs> or for me, for that matter. Um, yeah, there's not much else going on apart from. Orchids that I'm watching because they're not performing. Now Derek's plants, there's quite a few in there that are not performing very well, but they weren't expected to perform very well on the grounds that um, 
you know, they were nearly all in a state of rescue with no roots. And undersized, so probably underfed, undernourished, everything going wrong with those. So the fact that they're starting to grow now is pretty good news. I mean, if you take probably the worst one, the one that nearly got thrown out, I mean, you could say, what on earth are you keeping that for? But despite having a bulb that's shriveled and virtually rotten, and one leaf, it has produced a new growth. And that new growth will hopefully produce some roots. The reason why it's still around is where it came from and what it is. It is Odontoglossum Christotellum. So it's an, an original odont species, probably reclassified now. And that came across from Colombia, and that's come from a, an orchid nursery that I've never heard of, that may, may not even be still going anymore. Um, I could go and look it up, wouldn't it? Orchideas de Valle. Well, let's say you can read it for yourself. Um, but it, it's, it's difficult with Derek's plants because some of them are just so rare, and I've got to try and do my best to recover them. There is even a possibility that some of these are the only one in, in this country, the only one that's left. Because these, these crosses go back to the days when things weren't cloned. So, you know, the cross was done, seed was produced, and the seed was brought on in the flasks, and then however many plants were produced were sold away. And, and that was it. You know, there wasn't another lot coming on behind, necessarily. So some of those are pretty rare. Dead leaves spoil the look of the plant, especially when it's in bloom. <laughs> and they're going to fall off anyway. They can be helped. They can have a little help. Now you might, whoop, and then they fall on the floor, which means bending right down, which I'm not going to do. Um, my Dendrobium hercoglossum has an awful lot of spikes on it, but then it always does. But they're pushing on to actually show tiny little buds now. So um, that will be a sporadic blooming over a period of a couple of months, no doubt, because some, some spikes have got buds showing and some are just tiny little shoots on the cane. So again, uh, and then that, that plant's going to have to have a tidy up. It got remounted and grew a good root system, but as a consequence, a lot of the new growths didn't grow to their full size, so I need that to push out a lot of new growth this year if possible, because it won't get disturbed, so hopefully it will push out growths. So, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll have to do for today, like, uh, as I said, I've got to go out all the time. Uh, <coughs> need to get going, I'm afraid. Um, I mean, I will set the processing off for these. I'm playing a little trick on YouTube at the moment with my the new bonsai channel because um, I've realised to get that up to the point of monetization is, is not even worth thinking about at the moment. It's so far away. Um, I've got just over 300 watch hours and I need 4,000 watch hours. I'm nearly up to 400 subscribers so getting from 400 subscribers to 1,000 may or may not take that long, but those watch hours, you know, those watch hours can only increase if people go and watch videos, which means new ones need to be put up every now and again. And it's like I said with the bonsai hobby, sometimes there's not a lot going on. There's not, nothing to do for months on end sometimes. <laughs> Although we do have our... Um, I'm a bit disappointed. The trees I bought online, my fault for not checking it thoroughly enough, that I was looking for something, some things quite specific, and the place I found had both of the things I wanted. So I bought them. Now I've realised the nursery's in Northern Ireland, and there's something in the way. It's called an ocean. And they're stuck. So they're, they, they've been dispatched by the seller, and they're in the depot in Northern Ireland, which doesn't open on Sundays. 
and the plants didn't move yesterday because apparently the um, post office are doing different hours now. So I don't think those plants are even going to move from Northern Ireland until Monday. So I'm probably going to get them Wednesday. They could be dead by then. I'm a bit disappointed, quite honestly. But my fault, if I'd seen that they were in Northern Ireland, I'd have probably said, no, we won't bother with that. Because I could see an inherent delay. Um, also, they were bought in plenty of time, had it been in the UK, to have got to me this past week. So they wouldn't have to spend the weekend in a depot. But because the seller didn't dispatch them quickly, took a couple of days to actually get them posted, they've ended up going over a weekend. So I don't know what I'm going to get now. We shall have to wait and see. Um, my plumber is coming on Tuesday, crack of dawn, to drain the whole system down, flush it through, and hopefully get everything working, just at the point in the year where I don't really need it anymore. Heating comes on in the morning for a bit, and that's it. I don't put it on again during the day, it's it, I don't need it. However, you know, back in the winter the house was cold, so I did need it when it wasn't working properly. So that's got to be done. All the paperwork for the house and the shares has all been signed for at the other end, albeit on, the, on a Friday. Um, so the, the, that will get picked up again on Monday. Hopefully the conveyancer will update our case status and everything. Check all the forms have been sent in and are present and correct. And we should be heading for exchange of contracts very soon, very quickly. And the shares, that's just a matter of them processing them and posting the cheque off to me. So they won't do a bank transfer. It's 2022, for goodness sake. They're going to send me a cheque. <laughs> uh, I bet that'll come off an ancient scroll, you know, peel one off. Um, anyway, luckily now I don't have to go into town to go to my bank because my local post office will cash that cheque. Well, not cash it, pay it in for me. So that, that gets that done, and that's the last of the income dealt with. Um, there's one outstanding debt to pay, um, which I've been I'm waiting really for all the income to be there because it's a government payment. It's um it's pension money that was paid to mum that shouldn't that shouldn't have been, and it needs to be repaid. It needs to be paid back. So that's going to the government, so they can wait. <laughs> They always make everybody else wait for everything, don't they? Well, they can wait for that. If I get a nasty letter, then I'll send it off straight away. But I doubt that will happen. Um, yeah, so uh, that will do for today. Work done. Um, get this video processed. Don't forget the link on the end. Um, it's back to front, basically, because obviously that link would have been better Actually, I'll put it in as an info card, then it comes at the right time. So rather than an end screen, uh, this is going back again, where I picked those two little telumnias up and mentioned the end screen, at that point there'll be a little info card pops up. That's the video to go and look at me sorting them out and getting them remounted and everything so that you can see what they were like then, and then carry on with this video. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Ah, more coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, as I said, sorry no subject for today really, but um, oh, this, oh, this is about to get thrown away and a new one got because it just will not do up. And then when I do it up, I can't get it undone. And it's got no pressure release on it, so you're trying to undo it while it's under pressure. My big one just has a little lever you pull and it releases the pressure. But this, this one's becoming hard work because I'm having to do it up forcibly to get it to seal. So uh, I might see if, as it's a hose lock, the chances are that there is a replacement O-ring that I could order. Probably costs the same amount as a new sprayer. You know what it's like trying to get parts nowadays. Right, the only other thing that's going to open very soon is the Dendrobium Nesta. Those buds are large now, showing their colour, so they'll be opening soon. Um, the Lindleyi is actually quite a way off opening at the moment. The spikes are progressing nicely. 
you know, they're now sort of six, seven inches long, but the buds are still tiny and there's no colour on them yet. And this little oncidium type will probably be the next thing to open as the buds are just cracking. So that will probably be the next thing we can have a look at. And that's a colour changer as well, so the colours when it opens are not going to be the colours in a week's time. So we need to look at that when it opens. <laughs> before the colour changes. Okay, and uh, as I said, I've got work to do out here. I've got some repotting still to do. Not a lot, but some, including the two giant Renantha, not Renanthas, Restrepias, what began with R. Um, and I've got the moss to sort out on quite a few mounts, but I'm not sure. I suppose the easiest way to find out if I've got enough is to start and then if I run out, go and get some more. Um, otherwise, I can just go and get some more to replace what I've used up when I don't need it drastically. But yeah, I need to get that done. I need the mounts to be in the right sort of live moss. And the old UK collected sphagnum moss that's just gone all compacted and horrible, that's got to come off completely. And any old zombie moss can be teased out and replaced with live moss. Um, new roots will grow into the live moss. So I'm, I'm going to try and avoid unmounting things if I can. Um, but it's not a bad time of year to do that because growth is in progress, so we shall see. So we will have some what's now called tray time, which was kitchen time once upon a time. And, uh, anyway, usual thanks to all my subscribers and really, really big thanks to those that have gone from here over to the bonsai channel to get that up and running thanks a lot for that and i know there must be quite a few that have, that have done that that have no interest in bonsai whatsoever so thanks for just bothering basically because that's what you've done you've bothered to help out so big thanks for that and um the subscribe the subscribing on the bonsai channel is important in its initial days um but the watch hours are going to drag me going to drag me down on progressing that channel because it's a new channel. Um, new people finding it on YouTube are going to be thin on the ground, although compared with orchid channels there's an awful lot less bonsai channels, but then there's probably a lot less people interested in it. <laughs> we shall see. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for that, it, it's just appreciated. And if you haven't, the link's in the description to all of my orchid videos. The link to the Bonsai channel is in the description. So if you haven't popped across and subscribed, it would be nice if you did. But as I said, getting the watch hours up is... Um, I'm playing a little experiment at the moment. On my laptop, like I do with my orchid channel, I've got one playlist on the orchid channel that gets every single video in it, unless it's not about orchids. And that's just... I think the playlist is just called Roger's Orchids. But playlists are just a set, of, a set of videos that are related. That's all they are. And if you're busy, they're a really good way to put on some videos. So instead of putting a video on, and then when it finishes, everything either stops or you've got to go and get another one. If you stick a playlist on, you get a chain of videos playing one after the other, which you can stop as and when you, you know, want to do something else. So it's a good way of playing stuff in the background. And I'm playing an experiment with my bonsai channel because I'm playing on my laptop now that playlist that's got every one of my videos in it. Um, I don't know how long it will take to finish. And then I'm going to go back and have a look at the change to the views and the watch hours because I'm still undecided and I can't find out absolutely definitely. If you play a playlist with say three videos in, you get a view on the playlist itself. But do you get a view on each of those three videos as separate entities or not? But the one thing you do get is all three of those videos added together push up your watch hours total. That I do know. So I'm just playing a little game at the moment, <laughs> just playing. My, um, I'm not being silly and playing it from my own channel. I'm playing that watch list from my Orchid channel, having gone into the YouTube search mechanism. So they don't know it's me doing it. And I didn't tell you that, of course. 
anyway, see you next time. It's all good fun getting a channel up and running, but um, it's going to take a long time to get to monetization. 4,000 watch hours is just just miles away, isn't it? And that's a new thing. That's a relatively new thing they brought in that never used to be there. Basically, I think that was to stop when the pandemic came in, there was just a surge of YouTube channels, new YouTube channels. And the people at YouTube must have known that most of those were not going to continue. They were just something to do while people were locked down. And a lot of them are probably just static. They've loaded some videos and, and they're just sitting there doing nothing, taking up space and nobody ever watches anything. So I think, you know, people think, you know, when you're locked down, perhaps you weren't getting paid for work. Oh, if we get a YouTube channel going, there's people earning a fortune on YouTube. Yeah, not straight away. <laughs> it takes a long, long time to be able to earn a fortune. I mean, in the orchid world, there aren't that many that are up in that level where it's their living and they don't need to have a proper job. <laughs> or like me, retirement money coming in, <laughs> one or the other. There aren't that many orchid channels that you could say are earning a living. I mean, there's one very obvious one and there are probably others because I, obviously I only look at English speaking channels. There are some good channels in other languages out there but they're no good to me because I can't understand what's being said you know and there's some good ones out in the Far East and there are some good um, Southern American ones you know sort of Peru and places like that, Ecuador, where the orchids live, where a lot of our orchids come from. Um, but they tend to be like Spanish sounding speaking, so uh, no good for me. Anyway, I'll see you next time. I'm rabbiting now. <laughs> see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.